Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation for ECE 591. I will be presenting BEIT, BERT pre-training of image transformers. What is BEIT? BEIT stands for Bidirectional Encoder from Image Transformer. The paper outlines a self-supervised pre-training step for image transformers. What is the need for a self-supervised pre-trained step? There's a large amount of un unannotated or unlabeled data in our command. If a procedure can be found to pre-train a model on existing unannotated data and later such a model is paired with a task-specific layer, then that model is shown to perform much better at its task rather than the conventional trained model. The figure here outlines the steps involved. We have a huge amount of unlabeled data. We perform self-supervised pre-training and pre-train our model and then we append a task specific model which has limited or even no labeled data per task and then we perform the downstream AI tasks. This can range from language understanding and generation, machine translation, speech recognition, image classification and object detection. So what is the motivation behind this paper? Transformers have achieved promising performance in computer vision tasks as dem demonstrated in the comparison table taken from the paper an image is worth 16 cross 16 words. The way different visual de transformers demonstrate a marked improvement in performance when compared to convolutional neural networks on different databases. However, there is a drawback to visual transformers. They are very annotation hungry. That is, they require to be trained on a large annotated data set. For instance, in the experiments performed in the breakthrough paper, an image is worth 16 cross 16 words. Improvements on CNN were only seen when trained on data sets of 14 million to 300 million images. This is because transformers lack some of the inductive basis of CNNs such as translation equivalence and locality and therefore do not generalize well when trained on insufficient amounts of data. This graph outlines the problem. The x-axis represents the model size and the y-axis represents the image accuracy. When the data is greater than the model, the model it brings significant improvements in accuracy. However, when the data is less than the model size, the accuracy dips. This is due to overfitting. Hence, we can say that visual transformers are restricted by the annotation bottleneck even with larger models. As the solution for the lack of training data points towards a self-supervised training step in pre-training. Here, the question arises on how do you incorporate a self-supervised training step in a visual transformer. For this, the paper draws inspiration from the successes of BERT in the area of natural language processing. What is BERT? BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representation from Transformers. It essentially performs the pre-training step we need for our visual transformers but on natural on languages. It outlines a method to pre-train deep learning bidirectional transformers for language understanding. So how does BERT work? To understand how BERT works, we need to first understand how a transformer encodes. 
the transformer transforms the input to a different vector space. This draws parallel to a Fourier transform which transforms a time domain to frequency domain. For example, we can see here the sentence the cat sat on the mat is fed into an encoding layer and then a transformer's encoder. Each and each and every output of the transformer transformer's encoder is dependent on each and every input of the embedding layer. So, for example, the output U2 is not only dependent on the input cat but also dependent on the other words correspondingly the sat on the mat. In pre-training for BERT, we randomly mask a word and then we ask the question to our transformer, what is our masked word? The sentence along with a mask token is fed into our model. As you can see in the picture below, the word cat has been masked. We use a softmax classifier to, cl to classify the, U the vector um to a class. Now, here we have an encoded representation of the word cat, let it correspond to e, and a softmax and a probability matrix from a softmax, that is, that, let it correspond to p. Loss is then calculated using categorical cross entropy, where loss is equal to cross entropy of p e over p. Let's take a look at BEIT. BEIT consists of three main components our data, which is our images, our model, which is our vision transformer, and our pre training, which is our masked image modeling. The masked image modeling here is equivalent to omitting words which we have seen in BERT in the previous slides. So, how do we go from BERT to BEIT? In BERT, we compute the loss by encoding, for example, using one hot vector representation over a dictionary space. So, the question arises what is its equivalent ima in images? In images, we do not have a dictionary. So, what do we do here? Let's dive deeper into the challenge. There are no pre existing vocabulary for a patch which has been masked out in an image. For a word, it can be found in dictionary. But there is no equivalent of a dictionary for an image. So, why not use pixel level recovery? That is one solution to predict raw pixel data of the masked patches. However, this method is ineffective as it wastes the model capacity by making it focus on short range dependencies and high frequency details. The solution lies in visual tokens. What are visual tokens? We tokenize the image to discrete tokens using discrete variational autoencoder. We take our only original image and transform it into a matrix of n dimensions of each of discrete visual tokens. And then we have a decoder which decodes back decodes back the image. This can be summarized as we map x pixels of an image to z discrete tokens according to a visual codebook also called a tokenizer and then the decoder learns to reconstruct the input image x based on the visual token z. Reconstruction loss 
is taken to train the decoder. To understand BEIC, we need to understand what are the inputs and outputs of a transformer encoder. The input to a transformer encoder are image linearly embedded image patches. patches. That is, uh, patches which are parallelly embedded. And the output is a matrix of discrete tokens, similar to that we have seen in the tokenizer. So now we have two dis two different image representation. One is our visual token view, which we generate using our tokenizer, and the other, which is our patch view. The patch view is an equal division of the images to n number of patches. For example, let us presume our image is 224 cross 224 pixels. Then we can divide it up into 14 cross 14 patches, each patch having 16 cross 16 pixels. Next, we perform blockwise masking. Blockwise masking algorithm has been outlined here in algorithm 1. Unlike in BERT, we do not perform random masking. In BEIC, we would like to perform blockwise masking as it is proved, proved to be more effective in images. The algorithm, in the algorithm, we set the minimum number of patches to be 16. Then we randomly choose an aspect ratio for the masking block. We then repeat this process until we obtain masked patches of about 40 percent. Let us demonstrate by taking up an example. Illustrated below is an example of runoff blockwise masking algorithm. In the first iteration, it, insta it instantiates the size to be 24 and the aspect ratio to be 1.5 which then corresponds our length to be 6 and our breadth to be 4 and it occupies 24 pixels. This 24 patches, I'm sorry, this is 14 in patches into 14 patches, so total of 196 patches and we want to occupy at least 40% of the patches. In the first iteration, it masks 24 of those 196 patches. In the second iteration, it instantiates the size to be 20 and the aspect ratio to be 0 0.8, which then means our length is of 4 and our breadth is of 5, which you can see over here. And now we have masked a total of 24 plus 20, so a total of 44 uh, patches. In our third iteration, we treat our size to be 35 and our aspect ratio to be 0 0.7, which would then correspond that our length would be 5 and our breadth would be 7. Now we have a total of 44 plus 35, 79 patches ma masked. 79 over 149 would correspond to 0 0.4 5 4 1 which is greater than 40 percent so we stop masking we stop our masking algorithm we perform blockwise masking using the algorithm outlined previously and then we flatten the block fl flatten the patch embedding and then we add a position embedding to it this is our input 
to our BEIT encoder. And just like how you have, we have in our vision transformer, we add an extra patch plus position embedding at position 0 as outlined in the figure. The final stage is to ask our BIIT to predict the visual token corresponding to the masked image. This is done by, ask, by having a masked image modeling head appended to our BIIT. The aim of the BIIT in visual token recovery is to recover the masked patches as accurately as possible. So, for example, this patch corresponds to this particular output which is 234 and these two must match. That is how we pre-train our BEIT. We perform fine-tuning fine by appending our task layer to our pre-trained weights. The examples are outlined in the picture below. The examples can be an image classification using a softmax classifier or semantic segmentation using upernet etc. It can also be other task layers for such as object detection. One important thing to note here is our BEIT encoder has pre-trained model. So the weights have been pre-trained whereas the task layer is randomly initialized. So what are the results of BEIT? Pre-training using BEIT overcomes the previously outlined annotation hunger. As seen in the figure and seen in the graph below, BEIT requ requires 224 times less label data. Whereas BEIT approach 88.5 top 1% accuracy with almost 3 billion images. BEIT does the same with only 14 million images. BEIT pre-training also allows models to converge more quickly. An important aspect to note here is the number of epochs is for BEIT after fine tuning, whereas for DEIT it's training from scratch. DEIT refers to data efficient image transformer, which is just another form of transformer. These are my references which I have used for the presentation. Thank you for sitting through my presentation. Hope you have a nice day.